Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Today on Station Rigs, we're at Dolphin Middle Packs and Fire Company, just outside of Harrisburg, and we're taking a look at their Attack 38. To help us go over this truck, I want to introduce you to my good friend, Shane, who is the Assistant Chief. Hey, Shane, thanks for inviting us out here. Hi, Mike. Thanks this for coming This is a beautiful out. piece of apparatus you have here. Can you explain to us what's going on inside here? So, up front here, we got our radio that we communicate with 911 to. We got our siren. We got a flashlight here. And if you notice, we got a joystick here. And what's I'll that? I'll show you a little a bit joystick? later. A joystick? I'll show you a little bit later of what that does. Okay. So, you got a battery power on the side. Yep. So, you can turn it on and off. Yep. You got a, a quad cab here, so you got plenty of room. How many guys do you normally carry if you go out on call? Uh, we can carry five guys. Most of the time we carry four. Okay. You got the flashlights, you got the radios. You also have an AED. Yep. But this isn't a response vehicle. Why would you have an AED? Well, if we're up in the mountains, unfortunately, if one of our guys goes down, one of the guys go down, we have an AED there. We can start working them because when we're in the middle of the mountains, it's going to take a while to get EMS there. Heck yeah, you're thinking of forward. I like that. So you, as we move to the back here, this is the working business of this truck, right? That's correct. This is a flatbed, and it's got a ton of equipment on it, starting with lights. Are these always uh, plugged in? Can you take them off? These, How do those work? These are always play, plugged into stationary, but they do telescope up and down. Okay. And there's a switch on to turn them off, off and on, but the truck has to be running for that to happen. Okay. Uh, so you got some top chocks. And then cabinets, what's in these cabinets? Okay, so this first cabinet here, we have a water packs. It's like it's just like the old Indian tanks, but these are a lot comfortable to wear in their back. Right, right. So when we get to the scene, we fill them with water. The guys start hiking up, up the mountain. It was a pump on it, you can start pumping. Yeah, it, the to have the collapsible Indian tanks versus the old metal ones, you yeah. can store a lot more of them. Oh yeah, it's a lot so, lighter. I see you got some flares in there too. You can block off the road, make sure things are safe. Yep. Up behind that, you have some rakes. What kind of rakes are those? These are just forestry rakes. Okay. They have cutting teeth on them, so they cut through small sticks, uh, roots and stuff when we're, when we're making a line around the fire. Okay, okay. And then as we move back, we got another cabinet here. Yep, and this cabinet here, this is called the operator's compartment. <laughs> okay. So. He has different nozzles, he has fill hose, more weaning line if we need it. Okay. And different adapters he might need for different threads of hose. Okay, okay, so you got all the different nozzles. You can do straight stream, you can do fog, you can do whatever you need yep. to get it done. Yeah, these are adjustable nozzles so we can go from fog to straight stream. Up here you have some extra storage, what's in here? Up here we have some extra rakes, we have some axes in here, uh, some shovels. Okay, okay, so the real working tools. Yep. As we make our way back, I see you got a hose reel here. This is all pre-connected. This is all pre-connected. It's 100 feet. All the firefighter has to do is pull it off. The pump operator opens the valve and he has water at the end of the hose. Okay, let's step over to the other side and take a look at that. Before we do, you guys like this video, do us a favor, hit that subscribe, hit that notification, because we're really trying to build this. We're trying to get 50,000 subscribers in a couple months. So we finished up with the pre-connect, and this is a lot of stuff connected to a, what size engine is it? This is an 18 horsepower motor on this. Okay. The tank, the tank holds 400 gallons of water. We also have five gallons of foam. Okay. Sometimes when we're out in mountain fires, there's a lot of rock. We can, we can coat everything with, with foam and keep that fire, fire contained. Right, so you could pick different size nozzles. You got an inlet, you got a couple outlets, plus your pre-connect. Yep, that's correct. So, you know, this truck has a lot of weight on it. You know, we talk about 400 gallons of water. That's eight pounds per gallon, right? Something yep. like that. That's a lot of weight. This truck holds that kind of weight? Yeah, yeah, it does It does good. It climbs the mountains good. good. It has no problem. It's an F550 with what? With the 6.7 in it? Yeah, diesel, 6.7. 6 yeah, plenty of power. This is one of the hur, 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 hur. Yep. <laughs> so we got a bunch of hose here too. What kind of hoses you got? So we have 100 feet of inch and three quarter. We could pull that off, connect it to a pump, and hook one of the adjustable nozzles over in a pump operator's compartment. Okay. And we could have two lines going at one time if, if it's a large field fire or, or if someone's backyard's on fire or a plot of woods on fire. Right, right, right. The thicker one, that's not a supply line, is it? Yeah, this is a three inch supply line. There's a hundred feet of that on here. Okay. And sometimes we go up a long lane, we'll lay it out just like we would for a structure fire. Our tanker comes in behind, hooks up to it, and we have 400 gallons of water plus a 2,000 off the tanker. Yeah, I've, we've been at some stations where, you know, their pump only has 400 gallons of water. Yep. So, you know, having a truck this size, yep. able to get into those areas is pretty cool. What else we got in the cabinets here? So in this cabinet here, we have two chainsaws. We have a chainsaw bag and we have chaps and extra fuel. Okay. Sometimes we're out there on a mountain fire, we gotta cut trees down because they're burned inside. So we gotta put them down. Um, 
you know, we get trees across roads from high winds. We have to go out and cut the, them trees off the roadway. Right. Now, you mentioned the word CHAPS. Mm -hmm. Not many people know what CHAPS are for fire service. So CHAPS are something that you wear on your legs. So if the, so you wear them on your legs like this. So if the chainsaw will kick back, it won't cut your leg. It will just cut the chap. Okay, that makes sense. So it's, it's not necessarily fire retardant gear. No. It's for safety gear no. for, for the chainsaw. We just wear it over top of our, our forestry gear. Okay. And it protects our legs because sometimes the saw will kick back and we don't want no one to get hurt. Yeah, yeah, you want to be safe. What else we got in this cabinet? So this cabinet here, we have another small saw. We have oil for our saws. Yeah. And we have extra fuel for the pump because the pump runs off of unleaded fuel. Okay. We also have a leaf blower. Now, I told you guys we use rakes to rake a line around the fire, keep it from spreading. But sometimes we use a leaf blower also. That makes a lot quicker work getting leaves away from yeah, the fire. Yeah, that'll get all the small debris right out of the way. Yep. And then you can just work on the small vines and, and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, you also have some traffic cones. Yeah, that's just to block the road off. You know, if we're out in a fire scene, we got a whole bunch of apparatus on the road. Sometimes we got to close it. So it's just to protect us and our equipment sitting on the road. Okay. Okay. Now, you mentioned that joystick on the inside before, right? Yep. That is connected to this thing up front. Tell that's me about correct. this. So this up here is called a turret. Okay. It's plumbed into our tank in the back and our pump in the back. So all the driver has to do when he gets to the fire scene is he gets out, he starts up the pump, puts it in pump gear. He gets back in, he'll drive the truck while the officer will work the joystick to put a fire out along the highway. Or if we're soaking down a field that was on fire, we can, we can do straight stream and we can do fog stream. So if we just had a big field fire and we just want to soak everything down, if the field's not too soft, we'll drive out across it put it on fog stream, just dampen everything down to keep it. Okay. Make sure we got everything so it's a remote control firefighting. It's remote control firefighting. <laughs> That's pretty yep. cool to have. You also have a pretty large winch on here. It's a big truck. You're going to have to do that. Is that what, a 10,000, 12,000? 10,000 winch. Yeah, yeah. So even if you start getting stuck, you can get yourself out. Absolutely. Man, this is a beautiful truck. You got a big brush guard on it. My question is, is when you're doing this kind of thing, maybe you're fighting off the front, you know, you just went through a fire, you put it out. What about your wheels? Do they melt? How, how do you protect those? What do you do about that? No, we try not to drive straight through the fire. Um, you know, if we're driving out through a field, most of, most of the fire is out. Everything's not as hot enough to melt the tires. We'll just kind of wet it down. Gotcha. So we keep it out of the fire. You know, we might get next to it, but we'll keep it out of fire from, from anything melting. Okay, okay. Now, the very cool thing about your system here, not just the truck, you have it attached to a trailer and you bring an ATV with this. Yep, that's correct. Okay, let's take a look at this ATV. Okay. What year is this UTV? This is a 2017 Kawasaki Mule 4x4. Okay. And it's set up as a brush truck yep. and a EMS vehicle. This is the one of the first that we've seen. Uh, you have a winch up front. Yep, we have Okay, so this gets stuck. Yep. You have plenty of light bars. How many light bars you got on this? We have four on total. We have one on the front, two on the side, one on each side, and one on the back. Okay, so you can light up the scene where you're at. Yep. You got enough room for three people. Yep. And back here is where it's very unique. We did a brush truck before, or a rescue truck, okay. that are UTVs, right? Yep. We only had EMS or fire. It was either one or the other. You con you combined them. Yep. And so, how big is your tank? So this tank is 75 gallons. Okay. It has a 50 cc pump on it and it has 50 feet of regular garden hose on it and we carry a couple hundred feet of weenie line to connect to it. Okay, okay. So you can get a good reach out there. Yep. But the reason you put a Stokes basket on it is because you also use this for kind of rescues, right? That's correct. Yeah, we get a lot of mountain rescues. A lot of people hiking on Appalachian Trail. Some of the little trails we have around the area, they twist the ankle. Uh, break their ankle, break their leg on a rock and stuff. Okay. So we have to go out and basically package them in a Stokes basket and haul them back out to the main parking lot or the hard road where the ambulance is waiting for them. Right. So many of our viewers may not know where we're at. We're at Dolphin Middle Paxton in Dolphin County, Pennsylvania. Yep. So you have what kind of obstacles? You have Appalachian Trail, you just mentioned. Appalachian Trail. You have a river. Yep, we have the river. Uh, you have other wooded areas here. Yep. You have cover 28 square miles, right? Yep. And most of, the, a lot of that's wooded area, right? It is, yes. So what's, they hunt and fish up here all the time? Yeah, there's there's hunting people up here all the time, hunting. Uh, there's people up here fishing all the time. So, you know, obviously the hunters are off the trail in the woods, hiking over rocks, logs, you know, and they could trip, right. get hurt. 
right. fishermen to get to some of the creeks and not right along the road, so they got to hike into the woods a little bit too to get to a good fishing spot. Yeah, so you know, just having a standard ambulance come out or just a standard brush truck may get it and may not get it there. So having a mule, good yep. name for it, to get you up to it is pretty cool. Yep. Now you keep it pretty much connected to this uh, as a system. You yeah. have a trailer that you bring it with, yep. and what's inside the trailer? You use this very specifically so, too. So the trailer, we call this Ops 38 special operations trailer it not only carries the utv okay but inside here we can also use it as as a command post okay so you know if it's cold outside if it's rain and snowing outside while the guys are up in the mountains doing the rescue with the utv we have to have someone here with command because we can't just send guys into the woods and not have a, a good list of people who's who's where and stuff because you know, if, someone's, if we're going to find somebody that's lost, what if one of our guys are lost and we don't know it? Right, right. So, you know, kind of like the accountability when you go into a burning fire, you want to have accountability in yep. the woods. Yep, that's now, correct. Now, do you have power to this thing? How does this, does it work off the truck or how does it work? So we have a little Honda generator that we hook up outside and we, we have a, a cord that runs inside. Okay. And we can power our, our lights in here. We have a table, a fold-up table and chairs we can put up here. We have a laptop that we can hook up here too and have power to it. And we have whiteboard, notepad, so you know we can write down everybody's name from each company that's there. And you know if we need weather conditions, we get weather conditions from the county. Right, right. Yeah, I mean it's using every tool available to you. You got the mule, you got the brush truck that's pulling it, and you got a trailer with a yep. command system, all in one. It's not just you know one single entity. You're bringing the whole thing. No. This is an awesome way to do this, and you know we appreciate you letting us come out and take a look at it. It's a beautiful piece of apparatus. So that wraps up another episode of Station Rigs. Thank you for watching Heroes Next Door. Do us a favor, hit that subscribe, hit that notification so we can keep bringing you more.